Welcome to another edition of Focus, a program produced by the Department of Disaster Management. I'm your host, Philomena Robertson, Information and Education Manager at the DDM. In our last program, we premiered the video which captured the work done as part of the Smart Schools Pilot Project, which was undertaken at the three schools in Seacows Bay, namely the Ebenezer Thomas Primary School, Little Lighthouse Child Development Center, and the Seventh-day Adventist School. You would have seen the various components of the project, which included the installation of energy-efficient lighting at the SDA school, the introduction of recycling, the reintroduction of school-based gardening and the provision of supplies, community emergency response team training for teachers and members of the community, and a health fair to promote healthy eating and good hygiene practices. The Smart School Program builds upon the Safe School Program, which seeks to ensure that schools operating in the British Virgin Islands adhere to the minimum standards that are set out in the school's health and safety policy. Taking Safe School a step further, the Smart School Program adds green and healthy components, encouraging schools to make common sense improvements to reduce their operating cost and increase efficiency while at the same time encouraging the incorporation of healthy living for healthier student populations. Both the Safe and Smart School projects are initiatives of the DDM. However, it is critical to understand that the successful implementation requires the input of multiple stakeholders. Instrumental in this collaborative approach is the endorsement and support of the Ministry and Department of Education and Culture. After all, the responsibility for schools falls under their remit, and it is expected that the ministry will be able to take on the mantle and assume the lead role in ensuring that schools within the territory receive the requisite certification. When we return, I will be speaking to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education and Culture about the benefits of the program and the vision for future expansion. Let me see you shake like a quick no shake. Let me see you shake like a quick no shake. Let me see you shake like a quick no shake. Shake, shake. Drop to the ground and take a little cover under a table or strong furniture. Kneel, bend your head close to your knees. Hold on to a table leg or desk, please. Hand behind your head, protect your neck with your arm. Stay away from windows. You must understand if you don't have a shelter to hang on to. Remain in a place till the shaking through now. Shake. Let me see you shake. shake like a quick now. Shake. Let me see you shake. shake like a quick now. Drop, cover and hold. Stay in control. Drop, cover and hold. Shake. Let me see you shake. shake like a quick now. Shake. Let me see you shake. shake like a quick now. Wave tsunami. Wave tsunami. Wave tsunami. Move away from doorways, windows and shelves. Heavy objects to drop. You could damage yourself. Cabinets and bookcases may also fall. Just an object mounted on the walls And if caught outside, find an open space Debris from buildings may fly in your face Me lost it on the ground Cover your head and remember Every word that I say Shake, let me see you shake like a quake now Shake, let me see you shake like a quake now Drop, cover and hold Stay in control Drop, cover and hold Shake, let me see you shake like a quake now Shake, let me see you shake like a quake now Wave, tsunami Wave. Stay and wait for help and instructions Do not go down by the seat to watch the action Just to talk about what has happened In science lab chemicals may drop Exit only after shaking hands up Do not panic, everything will be fine Don't use the phone line at this time Shake, let me see you shake like a quake now Shake, let me see you shake like a quake now Drop, cover and hold, stay in control Drop, cover and hold let me see you shake like a quick no? shake. Let me see you shake like.
Welcome back to Focus. As mentioned before the break, both the SAFE and Smart School programs are fully endorsed by the Ministry and Department of Education and Culture. My guest today is Dr. Marcia Potter, who is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education and Culture. The Ministry's support for the program is well documented and we routinely mention your support in information that we disseminate to the public. But for our viewing audience, can you explain what that endorsement means and what is the role of your ministry in both the Safe and Smart School programs? Thank you, Philomena. Um, the, the Smart School project is one that the Ministry considers to be a very important one for us and, and for schools. Um, the, the ministry certainly, um, when you think about all the natural disasters, all the man-made disasters around us, realize that it is important for us to ensure that our schools are prepared, that they are resilient to disasters, that our children are um, taught and understand what it means to be um, safe, what it means to take care of the environment, to be able to mitigate against any disasters that come our way. And so the role of the ministry is really to, to, to um, provide a supportive environment to the disaster management unit to make sure that we put things in place and encourage our schools through our Department of Education to ensure that what needs to be done gets done. From the <coughs> ministry's perspective, what's your take on the overall significance of the project and how do both the safe and smart school projects fit into the overall strategy and vision for your ministry? Um, the, the project is an excellent one and um, there was no hesitating when we were approached by DDM to take part in, in this project. Um, it is a pilot project that takes in the Seacows Bay environment and it certainly fitted into the strategic priorities and the education sector strategy that we have. In the education sector strategy that has been adopted, we are one of the, the um, standards, so to speak, is that we have to provide a safe learning environment. The, and that is also one of the strategic priorities for the ministry going forward as we prepared our strategic priorities for planning for the year into the next two to three years. Um, and so it, it fitted right into to what we have. Also, when we think about the disaster plans that each school had to prepare um, for them, for each uh, the, the environment that they're in, um, it came in right at the, the right time as we worked with DDM to get those disaster plans up and, and ready for each school. Right, so there's a level of there's cohesiveness. Of, yes. yes. Um, what, what commitments, if any, has the ministry made with regard to the project, whether in terms of making resources available or making the certification mandatory? What is being at the ministry level to support the program? You just spoke earlier about the Safe School project, and, and so that is one of the certifications that we had um, spoken to DDM before, and it, we expect all schools to be certified as, as safe schools. When this project uh, um, comes to an, an end, so to speak, and we have the report, we expect that we will be able to um, bring in all schools into, into the Smart and Safe School project so that we go beyond the Safe School certification. So um, I think we have been constantly through the, the, the Chief Education Office and her team encouraging the schools that you have, they have to look at things like going green we need to, to, to look at our environment. We need to make sure that our children understand that. So in teaching in the curriculum, in even the things that they do around their school, day, that they are um, thinking green, to speak, um, that everybody understands what it is to be ready for disaster, what they need to do um, in any kind of disaster. It doesn't have to be a hurricane or, or a tsunami, although we tend to believe that those are the only things that sometimes but um, they must be prepared for, for any disaster. Um, and so the, from the ministry standpoint, we have been encouraging um, and making sure that as we work with the schools, as we do upgrades in schools, we are looking at how do we make the, the schools safer for everybody. Um, for example, electricity. We're looking, we've started in some schools and we're looking at LED lights. So if we put in LED lights, how will that affect our electricity bills? Um, you know, what are the other things that we have to make sure we, we realize that we have to do some more upgrades to some of our physical plants in order to um, mitigate against some of these disasters. So we, we have been taking some steps 
Um, some are small steps, but we have committed that this is an important area that we must work in with our schools. So. Excellent. And um, well, the LED lights is actually one of the components that we introduced as, as, school, as yes. part of the, the, the smart yes. school project. Um, so it's really good that there's, you know, again, that, that level of carry through on the ministries end. And mm -hmm. what I would note here, too, is that the schools, they're, they're becoming more and more interested because we're getting more and more calls from the schools now. They're not waiting for us to call them. They're calling us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to get help with mm -hmm. their evacuation planning, with their evacuation routes. Mm -hmm you know, to get inf information on the various hazards. So obviously the work that is being done both at the ministry and department level and the DDM is showing, you know, some measure of up uptake in the, in, in the education community. Yes, um, we are very happy to, 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 to know that because we've really worked with DDM from the very beginning. You know, we said to principals, don't wait to, for us. You have to do your disaster plans. That's compulsory. You need to get it done. So whatever help you have, DDM has given all the help that came. They've said whenever you need us, we will be there. And we have really developed a really wonderful working relationship with that department. And we hope that it carries through. <laughs> your view in focus. We'll be back in just a few. Just shaking and shaking and making big creaky noises. Earthquakes, big and small, take place in the Caribbean at least 10 times a year. The dishes rattling and falling and breaking, then Vonna started to scream. All I could think to do was shout, get outside, get out. Earthquakes, hazards, take control, reduce your loss. If an earthquake hits, what can you do? Get down, get under an item of furniture like a table. Hold on and stay there until the quake passes. Find out lots more about earthquakes and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from the Department of Disaster Management. Welcome back to Focus and a reminder that our guest today is Dr. Marcia Potter, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education. Dr. Potter, back when the Safe School project started, the data that was collected showed that the majority of safety concerns was actually within the, uh, the day school, preschool facilities. Now, how is the situation being addressed to ensure that the minimum standards are in fact met by these preschool institutions? Late last year, we had an assessment done with the help of UNICEF uh, of our daycares, preschool um, facilities. And that we're, we're awaiting that uh, survey report right now. But certainly the, the initial report that came out suggested that uh, um, in looking at the, the centers, that there were some strengths, but there were also some areas of concerns that need to be addressed. Um, it, uh, through the, the officer in the Department of Education responsible for early childhood education, she will be working with the proprietors of these institutions to make sure that they understand the areas of concerns and ensure that um, they are addressed, uh, you know, because it is important that we, we make sure that some minimum standards are, um, are kept and maintained. Certainly, moving from there, there are going to be policies put in place uh, for these uh, facilities. And, uh, um, Certainly, we, the ministry will be working closely with the, the, the chief education officer and her team on, on that as well to make sure that those things are in place so that all the proprietors are aware of what needs to be done. And wherever we can assist them, we will assist them in making sure that the facilities are meeting the minimum standards. Right, because of course it's in the best interest of the entire territory that these minimum standards are maintained and they're actually yes. set out in the school's health and safety yes. policy. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Now, do you see a role for corporate BVI or for the service clubs, maybe through the adopt -a school program, you know, to help these institutions get to the level where they can be certified safe and moving on now to the smart school certification? Uh, certainly. Um, there's always room for corporate BVI to be involved in, in education, and we welcome anybody, any, any of the um, institutions or their organizations who want to come on board, we welcome them. The Adopter School program, we've done a review. Um, it's back on stream, and, and um, I'm, our officer responsible for it has been meeting with a number of organizations, and 
they're ready to go. And so anybody else who wants to come in and work with us, they're welcome. And we would welcome help in, in this area as well. Um, we've had uh, um, assistance, for example, from Green BVI or Green VI, um, who worked with one of our schools. And certainly that's the kind of, of uh, um, assistance uh, we, we welcome with our schools. So. Right. And the, for the adopter school program, it requires the firm or the company or the service club, whatever it is, to make a certain financial contribution. Would you want to implore upon them too to adopt a hands-on approach with the institutions as well? Oh, certainly. That is part of the adopter school policy. So it's, it's not just given um, in, in terms of, of monetary donations to help in the schools. We have had several organizations who have gone who have had clean up days, we've had, um, you know, several other things that they've done with the students and the teachers in school. So it's not just monetary, it's coming in, working with students, talking to students, helping to teach students, whatever it is, we welcome the, the organizations coming into the school. So. Okay, very good. Last year, there was an attempt made by the DDM in collaboration with the training division to incorporate first aid and fire suppression <coughs> training as part of the professional development training that the teachers are offered at the start of the academic year. In terms of the project, this obviously helps to fulfill the need to have uh, teachers trained in health and safety and, and to establish um, health and safety officers on campus. Is there ministry level support for this dimension of the project? The short answer is yes, definitely yes. Um, it is important. Um, we have worked, I, I know that I've spoken to the chief education officer before and they've talked about meeting with Red Cross to do training for teachers during the, the annual summer institute that is done and that is very important. We do have some teachers in the schools who are already trained um, by Red Cross. And so definitely, you know, professional development in all areas is a very important thing for teachers. And um, when you think of yourself as a teacher, you're really a total caretaker of, of the children in your care for the day or for the period you have them in, in school. Um, I often say to, to teachers that when I started teaching, you had to be mother, father, teacher, uh, best friend to listen, counselor, Nurse, you had to do everything for the, for the children because that's the role you play. When you get into teaching, that's the expectation that you're taking on um, in teaching. So certainly the first aid training and, and any other um, training in that area that can help teachers, the ministry is in support of it and will certainly support the, the Department of Education in, in moving forward with that. That's very good news, Dr. Potter. You're viewing FOCUS, a program produced by the Department of Disaster Management. We'll be right back. The host was shaking, shaking. Then said the story here, babe. Crack, 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 crack. And the roof had gone. Man. I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind. It's a hazard. Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. You can hurricane proof your home. For example, make your roof more wind resistant by using screws instead of nails in its construction. Find out more about hurricane force winds and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from the Department of Disaster Management. Welcome back to Focus. The Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Environment, recently launched the Healthy Schools Intervention Program, which is designed to improve diet and physical activity patterns among students in grades two and three. Now, while this is separated to the Smart School Project, this certainly builds upon um, one of the objectives of the Smart School Project, which is to encourage the incorporation of healthy living into school operations. What are your thoughts on this? I'll start off by saying, Philomena, that um, it is very important for us to have cross-ministry collaboration. I think for some time we, we've worked in silos, so to speak, and it is important that we break out of the silos and understand that there are a number of areas that overlap from one ministry to the next. 
Um, it is often said that ministries of health and ministries of education don't work together. Well, I'd like to think that in the BVI, we have uh, moved away from that to thinking and, and um, perhaps maybe the first in the Caribbean to, to be moving in this direction, but certainly having a collaboration. We have signed an MOU with uh, the Ministry of Health, and that is to work with them in ensuring that we create healthy schools. Um, mind, soul, body, it's important that we, we reach our, our young people in all realms. Um, and so it is extremely important for us to, to continue this work in, in terms of, of developing healthy schools, what they eat, that they, their ex, the exercise is important, physical activity, um, and that they understand their environment and understand that if they don't take care of their environment, it also affects their health. So we are very pleased that we can have this collaboration with, with the Ministry of Health to, to take part. And as you said, it ties right into the, the smart uh, school project uh, and, and the collaboration we have with the, the Department of Disaster Management. Right. And all of that augurs well for comprehensive disaster management because it requires a collaboration of all sectors. It's not just the DDM, but it's everybody doing what they have to do within their own sectors, but coming together leading to a, an overall objective, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the BVI is recognized as pioneers for both the SAFE and the Smart School uh, projects. In fact, the SAFE School program um, served as um, the model, or it prompted the design of a model by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency that will be introduced to all of its participating states. So we started the ball rolling and now the rest of the Caribbean is going to, you know, get the move on towards having safe schools. How important is it for the BVI to be trailblazers? It is always good to be a trailblazer. It's always good to know that you've done something and you've done it right and there are other people who are looking to you and seeing um, what you have as a model to move forward. Um, it, it, it certainly makes you feel proud when you sit in, in regional and international um, fora and they ask you what you're doing, you tell them about the initiatives that you have in place and everybody goes, ah, um, you know, and they start asking you questions about it. So it's always good to be a trailblazer and, and, and you know, disaster management seems to be, be a trailblazer in a lot of things <laughs> throughout the region. Um, and so we're happy to be a part of, of, of that uh, and going forward and, and making sure that we continue to blaze the trail ahead and, and do other things uh, that other um, our neighbors will see it as good examples and, and to follow behind us and take it on board as well. Right. And of course, with the collaboration of ministries like yourself and, and you know, other sectors within the BVI, we can certainly continue to do that. Thank you very much, Dr. Potter, for being our guest today. I was speaking there to Dr. Marcia Potter, who is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education and Culture. The Department of Disaster Management is located at number 3 Whaling Road, McNamara, Tortola. Our mission is to protect lives and maintain a resilient, stable economy and society by fostering comprehensive disaster management and climate change adaptation as a way of life. For all your disaster management needs, contact the Department of Disaster Management at 468-4200 to speak with one of our knowledgeable staff. That's 468-4200. Or you can visit our website at www.bviddm.com. We're also on Facebook and you can follow us on Twitter. The Department of Disaster Management, your life-saving connection. Viewers, so that brings us to the end of this edition of Focus. I trust that you have gained a full understanding of the Smart Schools project that is spearheaded by the DDM. For those of you who are parents of school-aged children, I hope you are motivated enough to inquire about the status of your child's school. For those of you who are able to assist financially or otherwise, I trust that you too are now sufficiently encouraged to become part of this worthwhile initiative which really needs the input of multiple stakeholders. 
Let's work together to ensure that all schools in the BVI become safe and smart. I am Philomena Robertson, Information and Education Manager at the DDM. Be sure to tune in again next time.